Hey everybody, this is um, this is going to be some practice problems that involve gravi gravitation and circular motion, aka orbits. They're not all going to be about orbits, but most of them will be, and we'll go through them um, one by one. So we have five problems here. Let's start with problem one. When a satellite or planet is in orbit around an object of mass m at an orbital radius r. It orbits with speed v equals g square root of big GM over r. Let's derive this equation. So if we're in orbit, we have two objects, one of mass big M, one of mass little m. Little m is traveling at some speed v, and the distance between them is r, and they are in circular orbit around each other. There's a force acting that holds little m in place. And since it's in orbit, that force is going to be the gravitational force, Fg. But also, since this is uniform circular motion, we know that that's going to be a centripetal force, centripetal force. So the force of gravity is the centripetal force in this case, so we can set them equal to each other. Fg equals F sen. So let's write out an expression for both of these forces. We have g m m over little r squared. Our centripetal force we can write in a couple of different ways. We could do m v squared over r. We could do m omega squared r. Or we could do m times 4 pi squared big T over, um, sorry, that's 4 pi squared r over period squared. Uh, since we want to derive our answer in terms of speed, let's use mv squared over r, little m v squared over r. And it's little m because in our centripetal force, the mass is the mass that's moving in uniform circular motion. And that mass is our smaller mass, little m. So we can see that we have little m in both terms, which means our little m cancels. And this should also make sense because we know that um, it doesn't matter what the mass of an object is, all masses fall at the same rate in a gravitational field. So their accelerations um, should be the same, which means the mass shouldn't affect the orbital speed. Uh, we have r squared here and r over here. One of those r's cancels, and we're left with g m over r is equal to v squared. If we take the square root of both sides, we get our equation. Orbital speed is equal to the square root of big G, big M over R. So this is going to be true for any circular orbit. Um, the speed is equal to big G, or square root of big G, big M over R, where big M is the, the mass producing the gravitational field. Okay, there's question one. Let's move on to question two. I'm going to do it on a new page. A satellite orbits Earth with a period of 20 days. Find the orbital radius of the satellite. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So in number two, again, we're in an orbit. So we have a mass big M and some mass small m. Small m is in orbit around big M at some orbital radius r. And we are given the period is 20 days. 20 days. We're also given the mass of the Earth. Mass of the Earth, I'm going to call that big M, is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Well, again, we know that the centripetal force on the satellite equals the um, equals the gravitational force. Or we could say the centripetal acceleration is equal to our gravitational acceleration or our g field. So I'm going to write it as AC equals g. We could just as easily do force centripetal equals force of gravity. And we'll just find our m's cancel out. So since we're given a period, we want to write our centripetal acceleration in terms of period. So that's going to be 4 pi squared r over period squared. 
The gravitational, little g is the gravitational field at this point. Let's do it in green at this point where m is at this point at orbital distance r. So that's going to be little g produced by big M. That's equal to our centripetal acceleration. So little g uh, is g m over r squared. So if we want to figure out the orbital radius, we're solving for r. So we have an equation. We know big M. We know g. Let's actually highlight the ones we know. We know m. We know g. We know period. We're just solving for r. Okay, so we need to solve for r. We're going to, well, to get r in the numerator, I'm going to multiply both sides by r, and then we'll have combined these like terms. Not by r, by r squared. r squared times r squared on both sides. r squared cancels. We're left with 4 pi squared r cubed over t squared equals big G, big M. Um, now I still need to isolate r cubed, so let's multiply both sides by t squared over 4 pi squared. t squared over 4 pi squared to cancel out the pi squared, the 4, and the t squared. And we're left with r cubed equals g m t squared over 4 pi squared. To solve for r, we have to undo that cubing, so we got to take the cube root of both sides, which is the same as raising to the one-third power. So let's raise both sides to the one-third power, and we end up with an expression for r in terms of period and mass. r equals g m t squared over 4 pi squared raised to the one-third power. Now all we have to do is plug in our numbers and we can get an answer. However, there's an issue because our period is given in units of days. So we need to convert that period to seconds. I'm going to do that over here. T equals 20 days. Uh, let's convert to hours first. There are, in one day, there's 24 hours. I'm going to cancel days, so days is on the bottom. Hours up top. Now we're left in, with units of hours. One hour, there are 60 minutes, so cancel hours. One hour down below, 60 minutes up top. And we know that in one minute, there are 60 seconds. Minutes cancel. So we're left with our period being 20 times 24 times 60 times 60 seconds. which is 1.728 times 10 to the 6 seconds. Now we can just plug that in over here to our equation. G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. I'm going to omit units since it's all base SI. The mass of the Earth is given as 5.98 times 10 to the 24 running out of space, so I'm just going to move over and send it to 24. Our period is 1.728 times 10 to the 6. That whole thing is squared. Divided by 4 pi squared. And that whole thing raised to the 1 third power. So this is a, this is a big expression, but it wasn't that hard to get to. Just a little bit of algebra, and we plug it into a calculator. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5.98 times 10 to the 24 times 1.728 times 10 to the 6. That whole thing squared divided by 4 divided by pi squared. And that whole quantity raised to the 1 third power. We get our answer. It's going to be 3.11 times 10 to the 8 meters. 
Uh, and if we wanted to write that in kilometers, we would, well, there are 10 to the 3 kilometers in a meter. Or sorry, 10 to the 3 meters in a kilometer. So it would be 3.11 times 10 to the 5 kilometers. So essentially, just set your centripetal force or centripetal acceleration equal to your gravitational force or gravitational acceleration either acceleration or force. Let's look at number three. Two satellites have circular orbits around the same planet. Their masses are m and 5.5 m respectively, with orbital radii of r and 8 r respectively. Find the ratio of the orbital speeds of the smaller satellite to the larger, larger satellite. So, um, so we have some mass big M, and there are two things orbiting it. Little m at a distance r, and this is not to scale, by the way. 5.5 m at a distance um, at a distance 8 r, and we want to find the ratio of their speeds. So it's going to be Vm over V5m. Um, okay, so first thing that we should notice is, well, let, well, let's just think about a single, a single orbiting object. Actually, and we derived this earlier that for any orbiting object, the speed is g times big M over r all under the square root. So notice the orbital speed does not depend on the mass of the object that's orbiting. It only depends on the mass of the object that it's going around and the radius of the orbit. So we can actually use this expression. If you need to rederive it, you just set centripetal force equal to um, gravitational force. But we can use this expression to figure out the ratio of the speeds. So since um, since v equals uh, square root of gm over r, vm over v, I'm going to call it 5m, is equal to the square root of gm over, well, it's going to be the orbital radius of the smaller mass, which is r divided by the square root of big G, big M. Notice they're orbiting the same object, so the big M is the same, over um, over the distance, which is 8R. Oops, let's undo that. The G's cancel, and the big M's cancel. And we end up with, this is equal to the square root of 1 over r divided by the square root of 1 over 8r. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so it ends up being the square root of 8r over the square root of r. r is cancel, and we're just, we just end up with a ratio of the square root of 8. So our answer is... Um, since one object is 8 times as far away, the closer object goes at the square root of 8 times the speed. A shorter way to do that would be to use this equation up here and to see that v is proportional to 1 over the square root of r. So if we multiply r by 8, that implies that v is multiplied by 1 over the square root of so the greater distance we go out, we go down by root 8. Let's look at question 4. A satellite moves in a circular orbit around Earth with a speed of 1860 meters per second. Find the satellite's, satellite's altitude above the surface of the Earth. The mass and radius are 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms and 3 or 6.38 times 10 to the 3 kilometers, I should say, respectively. Let's start with the diagram of the Earth. We have the Earth, and we 
have some orbiting body above it. We'll call this little m, and the Earth is going to be big M. And they're a distance r apart, or their centers are a distance r apart. So uh, we want to find the altitude. So uh, what we can do is we could say that, well, the altitude is the distance above the surface of the Earth. That's going to be this distance here. I'm going to call it h for height above the surface. We could also call the radius of the Earth big R. The total distance between the centers of the two objects is just the radius of the Earth plus the height, uh, or the altitude, h. So we can use the uh, circular motion formula to figure this out. Let's look at what we're given. We're given the mass of Earth, given big M, and we're given the, we want to find r, so r is an unknown, and we're given the, we're given the speed. So we need an expression in terms of these. Again, we can set centripetal acceleration, m v squared, oops, that's just v squared, over r equal to gravitational acceleration, which is g m over r squared. And in this case, we want to find what big R is. I'm going to cancel out one of the r's. We're left with v squared equals g m over r. Multiply both sides by r. We get r v squared equals g m. Divide both sides by v squared. We get r equals g m over v squared. So Big R is just going to be 6.68 or 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 and units are newton meters squared per kilogram squared times big M, which is mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms divided by the square of the speed, which is 1860 meters per second. That whole thing squared we can get the orbital radius of our object. Which is 1.15 times 10 to the 8 meters. That's not the altitude. We know that r as we defined it before, r equals h plus r, where big R is the radius of the Earth. So to solve for our altitude h, it's just going to be total r, orbital radius, minus the Earth's radius. So we do 1.15 times 10 to the 8 meters minus the Earth's radius, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 3 kilometers, or 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters um, yes, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters which is going to be 1.09 times 10 to the 8 meters is our altitude then, or 1.09 times 10 to the 5 kilometers. So it's still quite high. 